Alright, now that my audio is synced with my video, I can go ahead and trim the video clip, uh, the beginning of the video clip, because I have that black video here. Uh, and that is because, remember, that we exported the audio, uh, but not video footage, out of Adobe Premiere earlier for the purpose of syncing my footage later on, which we have done so here. So now I can go ahead and trim this. Yeah, that, that looks good to me. You can see we have audio there too. So now, the next step of the process is to, once everything is synced, select all your footage, all your media, turn shuffle mode on, and slide it to the very beginning of the timeline. We do this because we want to make sure when we export that our footage stays in sync. Next, we can go ahead and bounce to QuickTime. These settings look pretty good. I'm going to label this as Reference Video. Next, we need to go flip over to our Mix window, go back to this plugin here, turn it on first of all, and we need to import our newly exported video that we call the reference video. There it is right there. So here you'll notice that we have our video and it's sort of that equitangular format that I mentioned earlier. And that's okay, but I prefer a different view. So I'm going to click panoramic down here. Now you can see that I have full control over where I'm looking in the uh, VR field. And as I turn, you can see these menus kind of shifting over here. That's to kind of give you a reference as to where you're looking uh, in, in relation to front, back, right, and left. So not the highest resolution, but that's okay because we're just previewing. So I'm going to go ahead and reset to front position. Now what we want to do is we want to set our export parameters. So when we export our video and audio from this plugin and from Pro Tools, we're going to end up with exactly what we need. So that's this guy right down here. Here we can name our file, so that's important. Let's do that. We can choose where we want to put it. And let's make sure this is where I want it. Yes, it is. Now we got to point back to the source video that I just imported and that I have prior just exported from Pro Tools. And this is the reference video file that we mentioned. So let's find that. All right, and we don't want to check this format. This is sort of their own format for G-Audio. Um, I'm sure it's great, but it's not what we need today. We want FOA, which stands for First Order Ambisonics. We want to keep it Ambix format, which is uh, the format that's officially recognized by YouTube, which is where this video is going to end up. Wave files are always great, high quality. And we do want a video container. We want the MOV since MP4 is not available. So let's go ahead and select OK. And there's one important step that we're going to want to make sure we do before we get much further. And that is to click on our Ambisonic audio track here. When we have it selected, we need to actually use a specific tool that was created by Sennheiser. Now the Ambio microphone that I mentioned before that I used to record this session records in A format. We need it to be in B format. So they actually created a specific plugin for that. It's an Audio Suite plugin. So I'm going to go to Sound Field, and there it is right there. Now it looks pretty clean for the most part. Uh, we don't really do a whole lot within it. We just got to make sure our output format is Ambix. And we are good for the Ambisonics correction filter. That's always good. Don't really need a low cut. And when I recorded, I was in the upright position with the microphone. And I don't need to rotate the stereo field at all. And we just kind of hit render. So that's really all it does. Uh, it kind of runs in the background. If you go back to our plugin here, you can see that on the left hand side, we have Ambisonics track. We have one track activated, but we don't have a channel track or object track. An object track is a uh, any, any track that's a mono source. 
So since I use the Ambio microphone, I have an ambisonic source, aka four channels. But uh, if you had a mono source, um, one microphone, it would show up here. You could actually place it anywhere within the uh, ambisonic field. Now the channel tracks are for stereo sources. So that could be music, that could be really anything that's stereo. And that shows up, uh, you can't really move them apart, but it, uh, you, you can move them around or up, down, again, anywhere in the, in the field that you see there. So if I wanted to, if I clicked on this, you can see this kind of lights up. I could actually rotate my ambisonic field. And this is really useful for when, say I set up my microphone, uh, the front isn't actually where the front is supposed to be. So I have to like actually flip uh, 180 degrees to go all the way back because my back is front and my front is back. Or just say I was just off a little bit where I wanted to be right in the center, but say I wasn't in the center. So I, then I can actually um, shift and uh, account for that, which is really nice, kind of a safety feature. So I'm going to go back to the center. And uh, that's really the bulk of what I need to do with this project since the mic stationary and the singers are kind of all around the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and add some quick EQ. And, and uh, when you add effects or compression or reverb or whatever you want to add, it does not matter if the plugins come after the Slave plugin or before the Slave plugin. Sometimes that's a factor with other software. In this case, it really isn't. Um, you can put it anywhere in the chain that you would like. I'm going to go ahead and play, and I'll adjust some EQ. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be Just a little touch-up, nothing major. And since it's choir, I'm not really going to add any compression in this case. Well, that pretty much just does it for uh, editing and mixing the spatial audio within Pro Tools. Uh, as we wrap up, we can basically hide this camera track. We don't need that anymore. And uh, we already did set our uh, plugin parameters within the Masterworks plugin. Let's just double check those. Yep, everything looks to be in order. So what we can do is we can close our viewers there, select our media, and we're gonna go ahead and bounce to QuickTime once more. We're not gonna label a reference video, we're actually gonna label it final video. Although this bounce out of Pro Tools is not ultimately going to matter because the plugin is going to actually create a specific video file that will have the spatial audio embedded within it, which is what we're going to want to use going forward. So what we are left with after we export to QuickTime the one final time, is we're actually left with a couple files. And they're not too confusing if you really look at them. So here is the final video bounce that we got from Pro Tools just now. Uh, we don't need these, these are from earlier. But the FOA, it gave me a video, final video file, and it also gave me an audio file, which is nice. But we don't really need the audio file for anything we're going to do. We need the video file, the FOA video file. And that has the ambisonic data embedded within the video file, which is a very important element. Um, going forth, the spatial audio is not going to work if we use the final video, because that is a stereo audio source in that video.